Hello, welcome to the uh, question and answers for part two of the artist presentations of Art on the Edge at the Peninsula Art Museum in San Bruno, California. Art on the Edge from extraction to restoration and regeneration. So who would like to ask a question? We have some artists from who were in in the last presentation and uh let's see if we can get a little dialogue going here for a few minutes i have a question um for vicky uh i was wondering if there's any uh, plan to fill in that pit and to try to, I mean, are they still mining there or uh, there has to be some sort of uh, plan to, the, I can't remember. The plan is that they pump it. They pump it daily, keep pumping it. They clean the water. They say it's clean. Don't, don't they want to get rid of it though? Oh, no. they would. I don't think they can because the water keeps going in it. Oh, now that sounds terrible and it could rise and go over that hilltop of the mountain, okay, sort of deep dish carved out mountain. But um, since the water drains into it, it means it's not draining out of it. Mm -hmm. So that's the good part. <laughs> but it is really toxic water and they, you can take a tour of it. You can see their pumping system. You can see their cannon for keeping the the geese off and the ducks off the poisonous lake. And it's quite a beautiful color of green turquoise, that lake. <laughs> like going to Yosemite, right? <laughs> right. Very bad. I mean, not, not Yosemite, like going to Yellowstone and looking Yosemite. at all the, um, the bubbling waters, maybe. The, yeah. But the, Butte itself is a sad kind of place, too. But mining. Mining, yeah. <laughs> Vicki yeah. Joe, I have a question about that. So um, have there been increased incidences of cancers and people getting sick? People yeah, who live yeah. Uh -huh. Montana has a lot of people who get sick. Mm -hmm. my, my favorite, <laughs> this is terrible to say it's my favorite, but have you ever heard of Libby, Montana? Mm -mm. That's where we had the, um, what is it? The stuff you, fire retardant? What is it? Um, asbestos. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's where we have asbestos mines in Montana. Oh, That's yeah. where we have the biggest amount of cancer. The whole town has cancer. And at first, the people who mined the asbestos told them they didn't. <laughs> but uh, yes, we have lots of strange cancers in Montana. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's, I, and the sad thing to me is the people who made the money. Don't pay for the cleanup. What's the, um, like, what is the local kind of mindset towards this? I mean, are people against it? Are they accepting it because they make money from the jobs that they have there? Or like what? There aren't many jobs in Butte, Montana. I would tell you that most, traditionally Montana is a red state. Mm -hmm. And the, the people who are upset by it are usually people to do with the colleges, Bozeman and Missoula, who are in the environmentalists. Fortunately, fish and game, people are good scientists there and they make sure that no animals land on that toxic lake anymore. That's who's taking care of it. Mm -hmm. But Montanans don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't, I can't tell you that they care. I, they're libertarians. So Vicki Jo, what do they do with the water after they pump it out of the pit? They say they, they have a pumping station there and they clean it and then it goes back into the Butte's water system. Oh no. <laughs> yes. God. Yeah, they say they clean it. I don't know how you get heavy metals out of things. But I don't know. But Butte is a kind of a, it's a sad thing. It's a dying town. Mm 
-hmm. mostly Polish miners. Great Polish food there. <laughs> Regina, you had your hand up. Um, yeah, because uh, this, you know, kind of toxic dumping and uh, no remediation is is happening right in my town in, in Richmond. And a lot of people care about it, but it still is forging ahead. There's a uh, project um, that is, uh, you know, in, in development uh, for like 4,000 houses and, you know, commercial multi-story buildings on top of the um, Stauffer, former Stauffer Chemical uh, AstraZeneca, who's making billions on our, you know, COVID shots and um, is somehow exempt from uh, doing a proper cleanup of a place that um, uh, has, you know, so many lethal chemicals that have been dumped for, um, I'm just doing a little mural for uh, Richmond and found that there was, even before Stauffer, there was a chemical company in the, you know, 1850 there. <laughs> so it, it has everything there. So even with people um, who are conscious, it's, I mean, I'm working on this project for this not to happen, but it keeps moving ahead. I don't know. That's... I just think that our society is very gullible and they believe all kinds of greenwashing. <laughs> yeah. I think I, they believe that oil companies care about the environment. <laughs> they, it's, I don't know. I did want to um, say to, um, to Michelle, mm -hmm. I run a community garden and the saddest thing to me is that I noticed how many bugs I don't have I don't have my butt and then that then I won't have my birds right I I have a lot less bugs mm -hmm. yeah we do too <laughs> oh god I, I notice it too in fact um I mean people in California in the Bay Area um in this group will know about this but um I live near a major modern western monarch butterfly overwintering site and the population has absolutely crashed Just, you know it's it's been crashing really for mm, probably 25 years but just like the last two or three years and this was all predicted you know everybody um you know we knew this was going to happen because of monsanto and roundup 20 years ago we knew and uh i don't know we have a government that worships money above all else you know Yeah, so I, I told my dentist this, I told him that, and he, he, and he told me, he said to me that he thought I was funny. <laughs> what do you mean less bugs? I said, okay, I'm funny. <laughs> Wait do you see when there's less birds. <laughs> then there's less, a lot of things for us to eat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we'll be rich until we are totally without food. <laughs> I know, Vicki Jo, that you went through the Master Gardening Program. And do you think that was something that, that was oh, helpful? Oh, I think it would, it would be great for anyone. If you love to garden, you should take it. Because um, they really, really, really are green, and they try so hard to keep people from using um, poison. But people use it all the time. People use it for white flies and aphids and stuff, even though they're not going to be successful. Because you really have to time it so carefully if you use poison. You have to know when the bugs are going to lay their eggs. You have to know what everything has to be perfect for you to be successful with poison 
And then in the end, you usually just poison yourself. Mm. So I would not, you know, just find alternatives, but master gardeners go to um, uh, farmers markets and have booths and try to tell people how to garden and how to compost. They, they're, it's a great class. All of my teachers came from Berkeley. It's a four month class and they teach you everything about gardening and biology, trees, everything. And then you went out and started your own community garden. Which right, is... and now I have so many trees. And next Sunday we'll plant a pink guava and we'll plant a passion fruit and a Myers lemon. I have two baby avocados and I have a 10 year old avocado my girlfriend gave me that was started from an avocado seed and it has avocados now. It lives in a whiskey barrel <laughs> and it has avocados. So Vicki, tell people, Tell people the story because it is a story from from oh, extraction to it is. the story of the plot of land that you used for your community garden. It's quite inspiring. Big Daddy's is a burnt down gas station. My community garden is built on a burnt down gas station, and everything is above ground. And the tank, the gas tanks are still there, it's shut down because of the lead in the gasoline in the '60s. Mm -hmm. It's right next to a freeway. But now it's all above, it's on, it's on asphalt, but all those trees are built on permaculture and live above that. I have two plum trees and an apricot tree and an apple tree and a pomegranate tree too. Okay. So this not to mention easy. the boxes for the community garden where people grow their vegetables. This might be a little bit of an ignorant question, but how do you get um, some more tropical trees like an avocado to grow in a place like Montana? Oh, I live in um, Emeryville, California. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I was like, how does this work? That, that would be good, okay. huh? <laughs> <laughs> it lives inside. I was like, what? But, but my family is from Montana. I go there in the summer. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why I drive by Butte. Mm -hmm. Regina, do you have anything else to say about your kind of emotional experience of uh, rubbing the trees? I mean, what's that, you know, what kind of, I don't know, communication or what, what's your experience of that? Um, well, I think just that shift of, you know, I was doing all of, I was doing rubbings of dead and dying trees and that, as soon as you know we were full blown into the COVID uh, era, um, I was just really drawn to um, the the living trees, the ones you know, our friends. That's what it felt like being with friends, <laughs> honestly. And um, uh, the um, live oaks, the bay, laurels, redwood trees, um, the elder, uh, alders, um, it just, uh, it, it felt, you know, like friends. I, I, I felt better doing it, um, is what I can say, and that there is, um, like, I taught um, art and, uh, you know, elementary school, and I was, I was doing martial arts at the time. I still do it, but I was starting out like for a warm up was to have everyone, you know, put their hands together and feel their chi, and uh, you know, was saying you can grow it. And these kids said, "Are you a witch? What are you doing?" I said, "I'm not doing that. That's you. That's your energy." You know that. I think that all living things have that uh, vibration. So, you know, spending a, a couple hours with a tree, <laughs> you, you, you get that. Um, 
a dear friend um, of mine who was uh, very much, she was a botanist and um, a lover of oaks and did oak ceremonies. And uh, sadly, I never made it to one, <laughs> but we talked about it uh, many times and sh she passed away uh, about a year ago. And I went out and um, just went through the forest looking for an oak tree that I could do a, a little homage to her passing and, and um, just was drawn to a tree that um, I did a rubbing of and it had these uh, two eccentric eyes in it. And I don't know, it just, um, uh, felt like a, a completion there because she died up in Oregon and I didn't, you know, you do a Zoom memorial, uh, it's not kind of the same as just, and it happened all quickly. Like one week she had found out she had ovarian cancer and literally the next week she died. I was completely shocked, you know, 50 years old. It was just like, whoa, at any rate, things like that, um, it, it helped me to be in the forest and uh, reading about you know, the Japanese and, you know, really that being a healing um, process for people, you know, they, they study it there and uh, just being among, uh, in the forest and listening and touching and um, looking um builds the immune system <laughs> so i don't know yeah so it's been a, a good experience mm -hmm. if that answers it. thank you do you have um, lauren you have a question yes i'm going to put offer sam an invitation to make any comments he might want to offer updating us on the the big extraction event is that all right Oops. Sure. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes. I mean, well, not not it's exactly. Taking up a little bit. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Too bad. Yep. I was really looking forward to an update on the, mm -hmm. the parent event. Yeah. So please do go to the website. We put it in the um, extraction. Let's see. This it's in it's already in the pack. Yeah, there you are. Extractionart.org. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's having problems. Yeah. Your internet activity forms. So I apologize. Yeah. Okay. Well, well we I can... noticed in, in Glasgow there were a whole series of, of pro art projects like listed. So. Are you in Glasgow, Sam? I cut out, but uh, <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? Okay. We're not really uh, hearing you, Sam. It's so oh, broken oh. up. Probably better to type into the chat. Yeah. So. Um, I also wanted to mention that this Thursday, um, November the 11th, uh, there's going to be a large event in San Francisco headed by Extinction Rebellion that is loaded with art and street performance. And it's going to start at the Ferry Building, walk towards the Aquatic Park, and then have the um, events over there. So you can look that up if, if you're interested in going to a big, lively, beautiful demonstration. And since it's a holiday, you can take children. I think it would be um, 
child appropriate. I'm curious how many of the artists who are in the show would can, have done a piece can, uh, without. Can people hear me now at all? A little bit. A little better. Yeah, try. Maybe, uh, Well, uh, Sam, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, it's not working, I mean, Sam. We can't hear you. Well, okay. One question: um, Did you? We did have catalogs. We did, you did send uh, catalogs. Do you have more that you would like to distribute? I know Vicki Jo is interested in some more. So uh, are there other artists who are here who would like to have more catalogs? Because if you'd like to take them, Melissa, you'd like one or how many? Because if you can distribute them, um, is that correct, Sam, that you can send out more to our various artists? Well, do you um, want to send to individual artists or to one central place, I guess would be the question. Right. Anybody in the Bay Area can pick up their, you know, all the ones we have are at the PMA gallery right now. Yeah, so, uh, so in Emeryville, our city council person, John Bowders, is at the um, Climate Accords in Scotland. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, he's one that I want to give a book to. And I, so I want to give it to our um, city council, who are very progressive and climate oriented. Mm -hmm. And the art committee is going to be doing a, a murals, uh, environmental murals, 10 murals. We're going to have a a, a mural series for environmental thing. I'll, I'll send it out when we're closer to having it. If people are muralists, painters. Is that well, maybe in Emeryville? In Emeryville, it'll be public art. Uh -huh. And I'll send out the information when, we're, when we have it down to an RFQ. Mm -hmm. So maybe Vicki Joe, you can connect directly with Sam about getting I was. I have your email, Sam. I'm going to email you ask, and send you asking you for books. <laughs> I'll send it to you tomorrow. And um, Melissa, I'll make sure we send you one when we send back your art. Okay. I'll be, I'll, well, I'll, be, I'll be gallery sitting, so I can pick one up then. Oh, great. I do, we do have one practical announcement. If you do want to go see the exhibition, do email gallery, the Pacific Peninsula Museum to make sure that somebody is going to be there. They've had, they had a lot of more volunteers in their previous place and some of the volunteers dropped out. They moved to the shopping center. So if you are um, thinking of taking a trip over there, just make sure that they are going to be open that day. They've been pretty good and they've been keeping it open, but it's always good to check if you're going to take a trek and over. You might want to actually go to see the museum at the same time as you stay and volunteer for three hours shift, <laughs> because it's kind of nice to be there amidst all that wonderful art. And uh, I think I sent out instructions how to arrange that with, uh, there's a calendar that you can fill out. I'll send it out to all the participating artists again. But we did commit to filling a certain number of shifts. So, you know, contract with the museum. Well, thank you all. Thank all the artists for doing this. I hope you will communicate with each other and that you've met a few new people and make some new contacts. And thank you, Sam, for uh, urging us on to this really important, important 
um, initiative. And it's not over because if other people are interested in setting up some other kind of exhibition, I, as I, I understand it, Sam's the website is continuing and more um, initiatives and actions are needed. So keep that in mind. Well, and, thank you very much. Right. Oh, I want to encourage everybody to invite your friends and colleagues to attend the, the final presentations next week on the 15th. Right. The more the Sam, merrier. do you want to try one more time? Can we hear you? I don't know. Sure. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we heard that. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there. Mm. But a mm. lag, I get this point. Mm. Okay. And I just want to say I am so amazed at the um, initiative to provoke uh, artists all around the world to participate in this extraction uh, thing. I mean, I, it's just kind of a remarkable uh, phenomena. And I love the word, the use of the word ruckus, having people create a, a ruckus right. around a whole extraction theme. It's, really appreciate that. All right. Well, thank you very much. I think let's close off the recording. And I, anybody who wants, I don't. <laughs> <laughs>